On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Amos has some house micro renovations. I know that was hard for you to say, but you did a mini credit card rant, which is hard for me to imagine. Uh, smart locks, knives out, couples retreat. Uh, those are things. Yeah, well, uh, you, if you have all those at the same time, you 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 better fucking call Saul. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery po- pro- Program, <laughs> <laughs> episode 243 for Thursday the 27th of February 2020. I still fucked the data. It's, it's, it, we're t- almost two full months in, I still can't say 2020 when I want to. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we don't matter because today, we, oh we don't have a guest. So I guess we do matter today. Kent, you finally fucking matter. What's going on, brother? Dude, <sighs> credit cards. They're great. Are they? I mean, usually. I so might. I, I, I might have missed that. M- missed that memo. So I've I've got a pretty good credit card. I've I've got one of those cards that gives me cash back, right? So I do this thing with my card where I <laughs> buy everything with it. <laughs> I basically use it as a debit card, and then I pay that balance at the end of each month. So I don't get charged interest, but I get I get a little cash back. I get like two percent cash back or something from the card. Okay. So it pays me back, right? Mm-hmm. It's it, I don't ever pay interest, so it's great. No, I, I I do the same thing. I don't get cash back, but I get miles, which ends up with ah, cheaper that's, flights. So nope. that works too. That works yeah. too. And when you're north of the wall like you are, right? That's important because airline tickets are like ten times more expensive for you than they would be for me. Right. And plus, I mean, you, but you got to imagine, you got to round up the dragons and shit. Like it's complicated catching a flight up here. So. Right. Absolutely. So I, I really like my credit card, except I got a notice a couple days ago that yeah. said that, uh, we, we think your, your credit card number may have been compromised. Oh, did they finally check in on you buying shit from Adam and com? I mean, that that wouldn't be unusual. <laughs> I don't know why they'd be flagging that, uh, but but no, I mean they didn't give me any details because like I I didn't have any disputed charges. Like there's like nothing going on. They're like just with in an abundance of caution, we're gonna send you a new card with a new number. Right, but they're gonna send you a new card with a new number in like three days. So that's three days. You can't buy beer. No, I, so both numbers are active, I guess. So um, I, I've still been able to purchase things. So I, it, it, I think it had like a two week, whatever, like a grace period where both numbers work. Um, and then once I go onto the site and say that yes, I received my card, like activate this card, it uh, just turns off the old number, mm. right? Okay, so that's all fine. Thanks for you know, good looking out, guys. Um, however. Remember when I said that I use my credit card for everything? Right. Basically use it as a debit card? Um, I mean everything. So <laughs> Netflix. Netflix, Amazon. Electric um, bill. Everything. <laughs> Apple Pay. <laughs> like everything. Yes. Dude, e- if I can use a credit card for it, I that's what I do. And then I just, like I said, I pay that balance at the end of every month and everything's good. But now, because I buy... You know, my lunches, I buy, you know, put, put gas in the car, everything. I'm going to have to go through probably a couple hundred <laughs> lines on my credit card statement to figure out every account that I use with this card. What a pain in the ass. Because what's going to end up happening? I'm going to miss something. And I'm like, yay, the new season of Stranger Things has started. Here we go. We're going to watch it. Wait, what are you <laughs> Like, oh, God damn it. And my stellar credit will go down the drain because I missed like seven payments. <laughs> I I had something similar to this. My personal debit card was apparently lost in the mail. So it expired. My current one expired. <clears throat> okay, fine. I had, you know, I couldn't use my allowance money. I had to use the, the family account to buy lunch a few times and this and that. USAA sent me a new one. No big deal. Got it, activated it. The day it activated, or the day I, I received that one, the following day I received a new family debit card for our family joint account for my, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. It had a new number on it. Mm-hmm. So I had to go through the same process. 
But now, because I had one card that expired, there was my personal stuff like Patreon, Humble Bundle, and then the family one that had a new number, like all of our accounts just went to shit. I still don't think we're paying for Netflix. Oh my God. But they'll catch up eventually. <laughs> so I am, I am concerned about my, my credit score. Um, because I, I, I received some good news the other day. Oh, um, I've always had pretty decent credit. Uh huh. I'm, I'm proud of my credit score. Uh huh. That's another benefit that I get from using my credit card all the time. Cause I'm, I'm showing that constant, uh, um, responsible use of, of credit. Right? right. 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 Um, so I'm like, you know, I'm probably like in the high sevens. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe I've crossed that 800 threshold, you know, 850 being the max. Right. Right. So my son, <laughs> uh, eight, eight, 850 being the, uh, the, the black card level. Right. Right. Yeah. So like anything above like seven, 80 or something like that is considered like a plus credit. Right. right? So, and I've, I've been there for, for a little bit, you know, after buying a couple houses and you know, paying off multiple car loans and, and uh, uh, d- d- divorcing yourself from a, your divorce by a few years. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and most importantly, not missing a payment. Like right. I haven't missed a payment on anything in probably God, 20 plus years. WPR I think, baby. I think even then it was because, it was a, a, a Playboy magazine <laughs> subscription that I'd ordered like kind of as a kind of as a joke. And um, I thought I would just write out the, um, you know, however many issues they would send until mm. I stopped <laughs> sending them. And then I got a collection notice. Um, that was when I was like 19 <laughs> years old, I think. Um, so since then, I don't think I've ever missed a payment on anything. <laughs> Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so this weekend, or uh, not this weekend, this earlier this week, I uh, took my son to purchase a car. Uh, um, yeah, buying a car sucks. Yes. Uh, it takes so long. Why does it take so long? It's so bad. We were probably in the dealership for a total of, we, so between two visits, we were probably in the goddamn place for like four, maybe five hours. Right. Buying it. What the hell? There was no price haggle because we were getting something very, um, let's call it lower end. Uh, right. Uh, used. Uh, affordable. Affordable. Yes. An affordable used vehicle. Um, it's his first car. So so we're doing the, um, I, I want the loan to be in his name, but because he has no established credit. Right. I had to use my credit to cosign, which I fully expected. That's kind of the reason I, uh, you know, I was prepared for that. So, um, no big deal. Uh, but we're still there for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And it was awful. And the majority of the time you're not doing anything. You're like not actively engaged in any activity other than twiddling your thumb. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so the car buying experience sucks. But uh, the cool thing was I got a credit score mm. report. And um, I'm 15 points shy of a perfect score. Nice. Like, holy shit. I'm about 70 points shy of your score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was really happy to see that. I, I'm well, like, I'm way comfortable in the A plus zone. So nice. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, my wife's been working on my credit for a long time. You know, I got uh, I went, oh, filed for bankruptcy, then the next year got divorced. So my credit took a really huge dive in like 2009. I, I had As shit does. credit. Um, mm-hmm. And then just started minding my P's and Q's since I was doing my own bill pay instead of relying on my wife. And then I got married. And then she's a stickler about credit scores. It's like it's one of her favorite things in the world to raise. And, uh, yeah, it's my credit score is doing pretty good. Uh, b- mostly cause I don't, I don't really use like we bought the kitchen set on our Lowe's card and then we got our tax return and paid it off. Like we don't let debt just sit around at all. Right. So, yep. um, we're fortunate like that, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun game to play because it's not an exact science on how to raise it. 
Like you, you might, you might look at your credit score, like still never missing a payment 40 years from now and still be like three points lower than what you are right now. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. There, You're right. It's not an exact science, but, th- but there are some solid strategies. Right. Yeah. But, and, and that's just it, but they're not, there's, there's solid strategies. There are no firm rules. Like, right. <laughs> Well, especially because there's three different credit bureaus and they all score things slightly differently. Right. Uh, because so I said that uh, so 835 was my score, but that was my highest one. I think that was TransUnion. I think the lowest one was like 815 or something like that. Yeah. So it was a, you know, a good chunk different, but they're still like even my lowest one was still well within A+. So I'm <sighs> like, oh. Yes, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I, I, I looked at mine one time and it was six, like six forty-five. Yeah. But and two of them were the same. It was like six forty-five and six forty-four or something like that. And then one of them was like three eighty. Oh. And I was like, what? wait, wait, what? That uh, does Right. What had happened was, um, the one that was three eighty showed, according to their paperwork, I had filed for for bankruptcy gotten divorced, filed for bankruptcy, and gotten divorced in consecutive years. So, so it must have been the other Amos. The other <laughs> Amos. It, 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 but all the dates matched. It just had different years at the end. So it was, like, <laughs> it was like 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. And I was like, that, um, no. So I had yeah, to send in not- some paperwork to get that cleared up and everything else. But yeah, that was... That's terrible. Yeah. And I was wondering why, you know, like, why is my credit, my average score so bad? I've been paying my bills and shit, but yeah, they just, that was stupid. Um, we've been, uh, we, I've been doing a lot of research lately on micro renovations. And I don't mean like tearing down walls, moving over like two inches, you know, mm-hmm. oh, the washer and dryer doesn't fit in this room. Let's just tear down the wall and move it two mm-hmm. inches instead of buying a new washer and dryer. Um right. Our bathroom fans are shit. Mm. They're shitty. So I'm replacing those and doing all the research to find out which ones are best, which ones are best for our our usage and everything else. I finally came out with one uh, with options and everything else. For the three fans, it was going to be like $2,200. And I was like, oh, that's that's Ooh, kind that's of insane. A um so I downgraded one one line from like you know the the 500 model down to the 400 model, and I get a a, a little bit f- less cubic feet per minute coming out of the bathroom through the van through the through the vent, but and the reason I looked at it is because the original vents I was looking at were six inch vent lines coming out of it six inch ducts, and the one I went to was a four or six inch it could do either, and I don't know what vent it, what vents I have in this house until I tear out a vent in which case I don't want to fucking put it back until I got a new one. Um, so instead of having to play the guessing game, I just went and went down to the one that had the four or the, t- the six inch, uh, ducting and the price for three of them was less than a third of the price of three of them before. So I'm actually just buying the one and getting the three, the way that it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. They're still, they're still super bougie and very expensive, but. Yeah, so it ends up being about seven hundred dollars for the for the th- or seven yeah seven fifty for the three of them, so about two fifty a piece. But I got them on that's, Lowe's with my ten percent discount and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's a lot better than the original yeah. price. And the problem in our house is we have some kids that will take long showers and forget to turn the fan on, or they like it steamy. We have certain people in the house that won't uh, turn the fan on when they're pooping, and therefore the whole house smells like it. Um, we have other That's people the, that will turn a fan on then leave and it'll be on for a day and a half because no one uses that bathroom. The fan's just fucking spinning at full speed. Yep. So I got the ones with the condensation sensor. So if it's too humid in the bathroom, it'll automatically turn on. It's got a motion sensor. So if it senses motion, it automatically turns on, um, all that stuff. Like I got all the bills. I did not get just the $70 fan that you can pick up from Lowe's. I did not get the Utilitech, uh, uh, bathroom fans, but it it took me like three months to find the ones that I wanted. That's uh that's some fancy ass fans, dude. Yes. Yeah. I've just got like um some fans that like there's a switch on my wall. Yeah. I, like turn it on. Yeah. And it spins. And and it makes noise. You don't know that it's actually spinning, but it makes noise. <laughs> it does make noise. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we I we have the one. 
the the room behind me is a bathroom and that particular bathroom it has this fan in it that is rated at three zones and zones are the level of noise that it creates anything over two is not typically acceptable for residences it's a three the ones that we have in the house right now that are the the nicer ones that are upstairs that, that, I'm, that I'm replacing are a one. The ones that I'm buying are a 0. 0.3 sewn fan. So okay. you're going to walk in and it's going to come out automatically and it's not going to sound hardly any different from not being on. It's going to be great. Mm. And why is that important? Is. It, it, yeah. it, it, why is that important? Because it's really hard to be pooping in the bathroom with a really loud fan and listen to your TikToks. Uh, see, I like louder fans when I'm pooping so that people don't have to hear the, you know, the bloop bloop oh, and the I'm not porcelain a... rattling. Uh... <laughs> it's not the bloop bloop that I'm worried about. It's the. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. And of course, it echoes off the porcelain and it's just, you know, yeah. throughout that. Yeah. So. So, yeah. And then uh, also this week we had a door handle on the front door. Uh, it just started coming apart and I went to investigate and one of the screws had broken off inside and then had stripped. So I was going to go just buy and, you know, get a new, get some new locks for the front and back door, you know, matching keys and shit, deadbolts. And on my way up to Lowe's, my wife is like, oh, and, and I keep mentioning Lowe's not because they sponsor the show, but because they're half the distance of Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So to get a Home Depot, I got to go all the way downtown. Whereas for Lowe's, it's like right across the street almost. Um. So I'm on my way to Lowe's. My wife's like, hey, now if you wanted to go get one of those fancy keypad smart lock things, uh, this might be the time. So four hours later, I get back home after having done all my research. Did you know they can, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they can rekey the lock according to your key? Oh. So instead what? of buying new, like I, I was going to have to buy a new lock, uh, handle deadbolt set, two of them for, you know, one for the front, one for the back. Yeah, and then I was like, "Well, how am I supposed to get the key like matching? Am I have multiple keys for the smart lock and the new handle?" And this, and the dude was like, "No, I can just rekey the new stuff to match your current key, and everything will work." Like fifteen minutes later, I was walking out of Home Depot because Lowe's didn't have what I was looking for, and walking out of Home Depot like, da -da -da! nice. So that's a win, dude. Like, yeah, I I've thought about doing locksmithing, like like learning the craft, learning the trade and just like, that's just kind of like a side gig, right? Or right. Like a, a side hustle. Is that the, is that what the cool kids are saying? Uh, I don't know if the cool kids consider themselves cool kids. I think they have a new name for themselves, but uh, I see where you're going. Yes. <laughs> um, but that's no, that's an interesting uh, capability that you can just match the lock to the key. That's uh, I like that. Yeah. It was pretty fucking phenomenal. So that's what happened there. Um, <clears throat> And finally, I watched Knives Out. I, uh, Ryan Johnson movie, a uh, mystery movie. Ryan Johnson written and directed movie. I didn't realize he wrote it as well as directed it. Mm -hmm. Fucking phenomenal. It has like a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes for such a good reason. It was, my, uh, my daughter and I watched it, Amber and I watched it, and after the movie... We sat there and we talked about how the movie was made just as much as we did the plot of the movie. Nice. It was just it was just really good. You have to watch it. Yeah, I'm I'll probably watch it this weekend. You uh, that's my intention. You could be watching it tonight because it's on my Plex, but whatever. Could be, but <laughs> probably <won't. laughs> Yeah. Um, no, that's a that's a great recommendation. I've, you're not by far the first person to uh, try to sell me on this movie. Um, Who was the first person to try to sell you on that movie? Because uh, I know besides the advertisers, um, well, probably no. my son Lucas. He yeah. saw the movie and was like, "Dad, <laughs> it's I would I would I would, um it's a it's a murder mystery, but I would put it in the." So we both love the movie Clue. Can I can I accurately say that? Yes. Like no, it's, Clue's Clue's great. It's a Clue. classic. It's amazing. The little triple ending at the end is just great. One um, of my favorite is the multiple ending. Yes. Uh, well, that and everything's just so completely over the top. Yes. Yes. And it's just it's such a tight comedy. It's right. It's, it's great. This is Clue without the multiple endings because you don't need them the way that the ending is structured. It kind of almost has multiple endings. 
but it's only got three highly erratic, like off the wall. What the hell is going on? Characters. One is the victim. One is the, uh, what would you uh, like? The, the main person of the story, uh, the protagonist, the protagonist. Yeah. And one is like, everybody could be, but one of them is the, it's not the, the antagonist. It's, like the person that's in the in between the 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 other two, so it's like well, kind of like a like a straight man or something. But he, but it's but he, it, it would be except it isn't. But yeah, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> like or the common you, man or something, right? Well, you you think okay, like in this particular case, one of the three, the one in the middle is the, like this person investigating the the murder mystery, right? Okay. And you think, oh, that that's the person that's gonna be the straight shooter, the the one that you can uh, kinda understand and and they're not. Like they're they're the most erratic person on the movie, but they fit that middle role so fucking perfectly. And yeah, the movie is just so excellently done. The lighting, pay attention to the lighting, it's ridiculous how well this movie's directed. Very nice. I, I very much look forward to, to watching this film. So great. Um I've been watching Better Call Saul. Which is nothing new. I've I've been watching Better Call Saul for several years now. But then, but so, so but, but, but but so why are you mentioning it now? Were you just desperate for topics? This, this is the first time that I have been caught up on like Breaking Bad universe ever. Like I watched Breaking Bad after the show ended. Like I started episode one after the show had already finished. Mm. And Better Call Saul, I catch on Netflix. Yeah. A year after the show airs. Right. Well, we have YouTube TV right mm-hmm. now. And one of the channels that we get is AMC, which is where Better Call Saul plays. And so that's now on my DVR whatever list. So we've been watching Better Call Saul the night that it airs. And is that changing your experience? Well, it's changing it in the fact that I can't, like, I want to watch episode three right now, but I got to wait until Monday right, to watch episode three. So it's changing my experience in that fashion. But it, it's, it's also, like, I don't have to avoid spoilers now. Like, right. I'm caught up. I can join the water cooler talk about Better Call Saul, and it's great. And what a great time to be in it. Have you watched Better Call Saul? Uh, not a lick. Oh, dude, it's so good. And it is right now is the best it's ever been because it is getting so close to to the Breaking Bad timeline. Right. Everything is like just starting to fall into place. And oh, man, it's great. It is so good. Nice. Um, I, I caught uh, Breaking Bad's final two half seasons as they aired. So. That's the, in fact, Breaking Bad was the last show I watched before we canceled cable for the last time. Mm. So, mm. um, W. Scott as one was mentioning Parasite, that Parasite was going to be coming to Hulu. Uh, Kent, you had the ability to watch that one right now too. So. Okay. That's great because I don't have Hulu. <laughs> right. I don't either, but I, we, we, we have I, all of the movies that we've purchased are on our Plex, like every single one of them. So every time a big movie comes out, we buy it and it goes on the Plex. So we can just watch it without having to dig through the DVDs. Sure. Yeah. That's the so way to do if, it. if you'd like to borrow that DVD, you have that capability. Excellent. Good. Very good. Um, okay. So well, last thing before we get into our break, our first break, man, this is a very heavy front loaded show. Like for a show, really we was. usually don't have anything. Rick and I did a couples retreat last week. Oh yes. How did that go? Uh, it was hosted by the chaplain service on base. It wasn't godly. It was the laugh your way to a better marriage. If you have the opportunity to attend this, I highly recommend it. Uh, not only because no kids were allowed, it was also El- at Elieska Resort, which is great because they had just gotten record snowfall. We were up there. They had gotten 65 inches on the three days prior to us arriving. And the accumulation on the mountain, like the 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 top of the mountain or whatever, was... Uh, wait... 121 inches of accumulation up top. That's the the current depth of the snow when we arrived, and it didn't stop snowing the entire time we were there. 
what the hell? But we weren't there to ski. We were there for this retreat. So we basically watched all these other families go have a whole lot of fun. Next Monday, we're supposed to be going as a family up there as part of another work thing for my wife. Um, yeah, it was it was great. Uh, all the best times are from my wife and I are when we get to spend time alone because that's originally how we started our relationship. Uh, my kids had moved away and she didn't want me around her kids until we got comfortable together and kind of knew it was going to last a while. So sure. all of our dating wasn't done with kids. It was done by ourselves. So every time we have one of these retreats, it's like this refreshing of our relationship. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday, the 29th of February is our third anniversary. We'll, we will have been married, uh, uh, 12 years, 12 years, third, third anniversary. It's third fucking be beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. Um, so I think we're going to go watch a movie. I think we're, we're actually going to go watch uh, birds of prey, get some dinner, then come back to the house. So sounds like a plan, dude. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Fantastic. Well, uh, if you want some more good times, you can head over to patreoncom slash ritual misery. Uh, you probably double your fun, right? If you like the shenanigans that we do on Ritual Misery, you can pretty much double the shenanigans. The pre and post show are usually the better parts of the show. That's that's true. And that's res that, that, that's reserved for the patrons. Uh, and if you watch live, patrons still get uh, they get they get basically as soon as we start the call until we end the call, and then the video the 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 Twitch video is somewhere between when we start the call and when we start the episode and ends somewhere between when we end the episode and when we end the call. So there's always some extra on both sides for the patrons. Yeah. So if that wasn't confusing enough, uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Just wait until uh, we start adding a mid roll. I promise <laughs> we won't do that. If you, if you sign up to be a patron, I promise we won't. Well, no matter how long or big this show ever might get, we will never have ads on our patron feeds. Unless they're funny. Mm, then, still. then we might, but, but they'd be they like... They won't be real ads. They'll be fake ads. They'd, they'd be at the end. <laughs> like there'd just, be, there'd just be like a three-minute gap in, of silence that your player would automatically skip over. And then at the end... Uh, it, well, the, the, the W Scott is one. They wouldn't be like not attack ads. They'd be more like NSF, NSFW ads, right? NSFW ads, or as you mentioned last week, uh, unmade, Un, unmade ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, were talking on this last episode I listened to, like, hey, we should maybe put out some of these conversations we had before. And I was sort of thinking, oh, you already have a Patreon, <laughs> like it's already there, dudes. Just do the thing. But whatever. Yeah, so patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Uh, show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. Yeah, and uh, maybe we'll buy you a drink in South by if you're there. Oh, uh, show. There's, there, there, this I've is, been known to do that. There's quite a, a bit. strong possibility that if, that if you're a patron and you see us in, at South by, we will buy you a drink. Yeah, and um, I'll go ahead and revive the original offer. If you show up to South by Southwest and we interact in person and you're wearing a ritual misery shirt or have any ritual misery merch you're drinking for free at, at least one drink maybe not yeah. all night i mean can't get up by you yeah minimum one drink i yeah. think uh i think dark redeemer drank for free an entire night on me uh, well whether it's, I, it's all, whether it, i was yeah. aware of it or not it's, it's all um, about how, <laughs> how drunk you are when he first shows you the shirt uh there are certain people out there that have a still in beta first edition still in beta shirt and they always get free drinks when we're around. So that's, that's just how it goes. Uh, we might revive something like that, but if you're, we have a link, we have a link for that for, uh, for the merch. Uh, yeah. Ritualmisery.com slash merch should take you somewhere close to where we have stuff. Or like if that link doesn't work, just go to ritualmisery.com and, and, um, it, it, there is a support link on the front page yep. and it will take you to, uh, all of the, the all the things. Goodness. Um, it's about that time, dude. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Talk nerdy to me, Amos. <sighs> no. <laughs> All right. So uh, this quiz is, are you a true nerd? Oh, I'm going to fail. 
So I, uh, I'm, like a, I'm like a pseudo nerd. I'm a, I'm a wannabe nerd. I'm a one nerd. So I, I don't know if, if I screwed up or if, um, yes. if I subconsciously um, stumbled upon greatness. I don't know, but I ended up clicking on the exact same type of thing this week that we did last week. Oh, it's in fact from the same source. Uh, so we're going to run through this quiz together. It's general nerdy topics. And I don't know the answers to any of these. If they're well, all D, we win. Yeah, well, I know for sure they're not because the first question only has three choices. Oh, so we have to make write our own choice for D. Yeah, but I think this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, RachelMisery.com slash swag is the appropriate link according to W. Scott. It's one. So many thanks to him. And if we see him at South by, he will definitely be getting a drink. Damn right. Oh, absolutely. Any, any, uh, any chance of you being in South by Willie? Let us know. <laughs> I think I, I think I owe him a couple drinks anyway. You probably uh, do. You probably owe him a few drinks for just all the late night ramblings you don't remember from all the exactly. drinks you already had. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So first question. If you don't get this right off the right off the bat, um, we're probably not friends anymore. We're just going to end this podcast. Okay. Well, before we become not friends anymore, ask me later about late June. Late June. Because I will um, forget. Oh, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Pretty sure. High level of confidence. Oh. I don't have access to your calendar. Not only do I have access, but I get push notifications. Oh, yes, yes. Then you do know. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, we're, we're the good. The TV series Firefly, uh-huh. a cult favorite among nerds, uh-huh. was a mashup of sci-fi with what other genre? Uh, uh, basically westerns. Yes. And okay. that's choice A. Uh, the other choices were sword and sorcery and espionage thrillers. Um, but um, cause the reason I stumbled on that is because you could put like spaghetti westerns. You could say like there's there, there's different ways of classifying westerns, but westerns is is the basic tone of it, the cowboy genre. Absolutely. And uh, oh, so this one, unlike last week's, actually tells me whether we get it correct. And uh, oh, dude, of course, get we, it correct. It, yeah. All right. Who has been given credit for coining the term nerd? Any idea before I give you the choices? Um, it was the, oh shit. I knew this and you're going to say it and I'm going to fucking smack myself for not remembering it. I want to see you smack yourself. I mean. I'm going to go ahead and read the three choices. We'll, we'll, make, got, that, we'll make that a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> we've got Philip K. Dick, George Lucas, or Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss. Uh, I agree with you. I have no indication that this is correct, but it sounds, nerd sounds like a Dr. Seuss word. Um, yep. And plus, I'm 99.9% sure that George Lucas didn't come up with the word. Um, Being that Philip he K. is a nerd. <laughs> yeah, Philip K. Dick wrote a lot of stuff. He might have. Uh, but I feel, I'm feeling Dr. Seuss. And, Philip K. Uh, Dick is more likely to have come up with the word, word with the name Nazi than nerd. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were correct on that. All right. Which of these is a? Ooh, let me start that one over. Which of these is associated with nerdiness? <laughs> Science, fantasy game playing, or both? Both. Yeah. Like, come on. All right. Um, which of these superheroes does not have a nerdy alter ego? Oh, this one. Th- this might stumble me, but should be easy for you. This is yeah. This is basicness right here. Oh, okay. Superman, Spider Man, Batman. Batman. Wh- which one doesn't have a nerdy alter ego? Bruce Wayne is we- not a nerd. Correct. He is, as they describe here, debonair. Debonair. Uh, you have to right, say so it like that. You, you, you have to say it with the uh, with with the 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 whisper tones, debonair. Yes. <laughs> what, <laughs> what innovations? Oh, another uh, Philip K. Dick question. What innovation did sci-fi author Philip K. Dick introduce to nerdiness? Was it wearing glasses with tape on them? Spell, uh, spelling it N U R D nerd. Or liking Star Wars? That's, that's a weird question. I'm going to say the glasses, but I, uh, I I remember hearing the origins of that, but I, I don't... I, mm. 
I want to go with wearing glasses with tape on them because the other ones just feel dumb. To me. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Are you good with that? Yeah. There we go. Oh, fuck me. No. It's uh, spelling it N U R D. That's dumb. Okay, next. Damn it. Okay. All right. Which of these websites bills itself as news for nerds? Hmm. Slash dot. Hmm. Wired. Hmm. IO9. Hmm. That's tough because they all kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're all. And I, nerd I don't go to them often enough to know which one has which thing. I just see the feeds. Exactly. Same, same. Because mm. I, I typically use news aggregators. Right. And I get all of these in my feed. So I'm going to go IO9. IO9? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on this. Solidarity. Bum, 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 bum. Slash dot. Ah. Use for nerds. Oh, eh, well. <sighs> all right. Oh, God. No idea on this one. What date is National Nerd Pride Day? March 14th. The choices are May 25th, June 6th, January 12th. Mar- he said March 26th? Uh, no, I said May 25th. May 25th. Five, June, five. Yeah, June 6th. 6.06. Or January 12th. 1.12. Yeah, see, I would I would expect it would be March 14th, but uh, it's not an option. Here. I'm going to go with June 6th because it's Patrick's birthday. Okay. I mean, that makes sense because I mean, uh, he's a giant nerd. I, yeah, well, because I don't have any basis for any of the others. Mm, well... According to National Nerd Pride Day's Facebook page, it occurs on May 25th. What's the relevance? Yeah, I don't know. No right. idea. Um, I'm going to call Bush on that one, too. Throw that one out. That one doesn't yeah. count. Yeah, that's, that's a stupid question. It's dumb. Which country has a reality TV show in which a group of nerds form a soccer team? Which country has a reality game show where a bunch of nerds form a soccer team? Like as the central thesis of the show, or just that it happened? Well, I'm imagining that this is the premise of the show, right? Uh, but I mean that that that's a little ambiguous because didn't they do some shit like that on King of the Nerds? Uh, that's a show. See, you don't <laughs> you don't you, you don't know anything. Uh, you, Our choices are Germany, England, or Netherlands. Uh, I'm gonna go with England. Because I, I just, it could be I the feel, Netherlands. I feel that this is a British thing. God damn it, Germany. Uh, it's the Netherlands. It says uh, in the Dutch TV show FC Zulu, a group of nerds forms a soccer team. All right, all I mean, right. We're not so. I don't know how nerdy we are. Like I thought we were nerdy, but I think we're nerdier than these fucking questions uh, are leading us up to believe. Because some of these questions yeah, are just straight stupid. Watch. Nerds don't watch reality shows. Like, what the hell are they doing here? All right, De- definitely not ones routed, re- re- like like related to sports. <laughs> sports, <laughs> sports ball. Who uttered the quote? What they lack in physical strength, they make up in brain power. Choices are: Conan the Barbarian. No. Job of the Hut. No. Nerder Raider, or no, I'm sorry, Ner, Ner, what? Ner, Nerdator? Nerdator? N-E-R-D-A-T-O-R. Nerdator. Nerdator. I'm going to go with the first one. Conan the Barbarian? Sure. Okay, sure. Um, Solidarity, here we go. The Nerdator, a character in the animated series Steven Spielberg presents Freakazoid. Spoke those words. Sure. Well, shit. Weird, weird. Not winning this one. <laughs> Which franchise's storyline takes place first chronologically? Oh, okay. Okay. Star Trek, Star Wars, or they're simultaneous? I know the answer to this one. 
I, I, I don't like the question because they're completely unrelated. So there's no, uh, their, their timelines are exclusive of each other by storyline, but also by universe. Therefore they occur at the same time. I am not choosing that. I'm choosing the correct answer. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, yep, you're right. Star Wars happens first because it was a uh, galaxy far away and a uh, long, long ago in a galaxy far away. Yes, a long yep. time ago. Galaxy far, far away. And uh, Star Trek is future. So, Well, Star Trek is the 22nd, 23rd century? 23rd century. 23rd century is when Yeah, because it's yes. 2260s or some shit like that. Uh, TNG is the 24th century. All right. What is the fabled 13th human colony in Battlestar Galactica? No idea. Same. I never watched BSG, BSG in my fucking life. I used to watch the original series, like the 70s, 80s series, uh, when I was, you know, six, nope, seven. Nope. Um, the new BSG, I saw half of the pilot. <laughs> and it bored the fuck out of me, and I just never went back. <sighs> Even though everybody says that that's, that's important nerd cred shit to watch because it's amazing right uh, yeah mm. perhaps one day <laughs> perhaps one day i no, right, so I, the, I think i tried to watch the new bsg but I, 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 there's about to be an even newer bsg i just they're can't. about to reboot it again i just can't oh man yeah i don't know all right so our choices are new uranus i could have said uranus but i i like but anus you, you, better you, than you, urine uh, well <laughs> I I'm an guess. Ex. Yeah. So new Uranus, Zebron 12. Sounds good. Or Earth. Oh, I'm going to go with Earth. Earth. Definitely Earth. Yes, definitely Earth. You think that's the 13th human colony? Fuck if I know, I thought dude. the premise of the show is that they left Earth. because Wh Which Earth. makes sense. Why is the mysterious 13th colony? I know. You don't like my lack of knowledge. My lack of... of of no you know what i'm going to choose it because i have got nothing to go on other than <laughs> I, I i think earth is kind of a dumb answer yeah but i think also think that new uranus and zebron 12 are both dumb answers so you might um, as well go with the surprise one right yeah so since you're pretty hardcore on earth i'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and click this thing here uh, damn i need a drum roll why do i not have drum roll? Here we go. Earth. We got it right. Woo! It's Earth. <laughs> How the fuck? How? Uh, it totally made sense to me, but I think different. Damn it. <sighs> you're like, it's good times. I like it. Thing, they just think that, yes. Know. It just uh, made sense to uh, me for some reason. Earth. All right. So what, what was our score? Hold on. We're not done yet. Oh, shit. It's still going. What did the nuclear physicist have for lunch? Oh, God. They threw a joke one in here, apparently. What did the nuclear physicist have for lunch? Your choices are cesium salad, fission chips, or atomic barbecue. God damn it. Cesium I, salad. See, I'm leaning toward Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Ah, <laughs> uh, fish and nerdy chips. Nerdy shit. Like, that's super gotcha. fucking nerdy. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, that, that makes, that does make We're sense. Fish and chips. Fish and chips, yes. 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 That's we some Ian it. St. Ian shit right there. I'm Ian St. Ian. Uh, uh, fuck it. Kids, ask your parents. <laughs> what is the, Contem what is the contemporaries? Ask your parents. <laughs> Millennials, Gen Zers. Just get, yeah, just give up. <laughs> what is the current record for solving pi? What? 
I don't, that, oh, uh, okay. So they're asking how many digits, like mm-hmm. has. Uh, no, no, and that and that's what I assumed. But there are okay. there are different there there are competing algorithms at work at this, uh, and they're both coming up with different answers. Okay, so the the choices so, are two thousand four hundred fifty-two digits. Okay. Ten million digits. Okay. Or five trillion digits. I'm gonna go with the middle one. Ten million digits? Yeah, I, 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 I seems okay. shady to me, but I'm gonna go with the middle one just because. Fuck it, why not? Ten trillion digits is a lot of fucking digits. Uh, according to this, it says the new record for calculating pi, established in October 2011, is five trillion digits. Good <laughs> lord. With zero, uh, I don't. Man, I watched I watch too much number file. Okay, so what's the next question? What book did comic book guy translate into Klingon for his master's thesis in The Simpsons? What book did comic book guy translate into Klingon for his master's thesis in The Simpsons? Choices are The Little Prince, Lord of the Rings, or Beowulf. Beowulf. That's what I feel like going with as well. Um, for just, no reason other than that's like the classic, like the classic book. Well, it just seems more Simpson-y to me. Yeah, and that, and that. Well, fuck us. <laughs> uh, the answer is Lord of the Rings. Jeez. Um. All right. So I've seen probably 12 episodes of The Simpsons. Uh, I've probably seen four times that. Yeah. So both of us, uh, or neither of us, are um, very Simpsons knowledgeable. All right. What does the third initial in J.R.R. Tolkien's name stand for? Robert. I, I know this one. For I factually know this one. So the choices are Ronald, Romulus, or Ruel. Ruel. Correct. I know this one is right. And yes. Uh, because, yeah, Ronald is his second name. So it's John <clears throat> Ruel Tolkien. Or at least it was. I guess it still <laughs> is, even though he's not carrying the name anymore. But whatever. Right. Yeah. Is the theoretical Higgs boson particle bigger or smaller than a proton? Oh, I know. Smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bigger, yeah. bigger, not, bigger than a quark, smaller than a proton. Bigger than a quark? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's accurate either. Bigger it, than a quark? It it has to be because a quark is the smallest possibly measured distance. I don't. Um, hmm. I have to look into that. But the um, so Higgs boson is estimated to be about one hundredth the size of a proton. Um, Higgs boson is what they they uh, kind of nicknamed the God particle, right? So imagine it's pretty goddamn small. So anyway, what is Captain Picard's customary spoken order to subordinates? Make it so. This is, yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna read the other ones because they're stupid. Next one. Oh, <laughs> this one. I'm. What is RPG in nerd speak? A uh, really fat girl with fat being um, a P-H-A-T, like knocked out. Right. So you were correct when you said role-playing game. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other answers were rocket-propelled grenade and uh, what is this? Relativistic prophet ghost lord. Mm. I wish that was the answer. Um, okay. Which of these is an acceptable alternative term for Hobbit? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a chance to to figure this one out without hearing the choices because to me this one was pretty obvious. Which of these is an acceptable alternative term for Hobbit? So if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and you want to play a Hobbit, Hobbit is not well the it, race. It, for Dungeons and Dragons to be halfling, okay, or dwarf. Uh, but right. that's, I mean, that's the technical term, I guess, for people of very small stature. But it, it wouldn't be a dwarf because dwarves, dwarves are separate creatures in yeah, yeah, Middle yeah, Earth. 
So, um, so you are you comfortable with halfling? I'm gonna have to go with halfling. It's the only yeah, makes sense. To- that's totally correct. What are the options they give? Uh, they said elf lord. No. <laughs> Wizard. No. Or halfling. Okay. Um, a quark is smaller than the Higgs boson. Because as the Higgs boson decays, it can become a quark and a quark pair. Okay. All right, let's go with that. I, I know my my I, I know like five things and they're all really shitty and useless in my life, but I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if you know this one. No. Which of these creatures lives in tunnels in the Warhammer fictional universe? I already answered this. No. I don't know. <laughs> the choices are orcs, skaven, or undead. I'm going to go with uh, skaven because orcs typically live in forest environments and undead can fucking live anywhere. So I'm going to go with skaven. Yep. That's, that logic sounds sound to me. Does that work? Sounds sound? me we were correct on skaven right okay how many more of these we got that's it that was final what was our final grade we are getting our score right now it is oh god uh 43 we got got 13 out of 20 oh uh which gives us 65 percent. right so we got the d we did get the d uh, congratulations to us on sharing the D. Uh, apparently, the average score in this quiz is fifty three percent, and we scored better than seventy percent of the quiz takers. Holy shit! So I think that means we're pretty nerdy. Uh, even though we're not- that's like a nerd redemption right there. Like that was. Uh, I don't know. How, I don't know how I feel about any of that actually. Yeah. So, um, well, we got the D. There so- we go. So we're talking about nerd stuff. Yep. Uh, did you grow up nerdy? Like, were you a fucking nerd when you were a kid? I was not nerdy. So uh, I I was always geeky, but I was not nerdy. Geeky being the thing that you enjoy spending your time on and nerdy being the harvesting of knowledge in very specific areas. Uh, I was geeky, not nerdy. I became, I'm, I grow more nerdy as I get older, actually. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's kind of how the, the Higgs boson versus quark shit like. I Yeah, I think I get older or, or, or yeah, obviously I get older. I, I, think I get I, older as yeah, a nerd. Yeah, I think I get nerdier as I age, <laughs> uh, but I think I'm better at hiding it. Oh, like, I don't advertise, like I don't fly the nerd flag like just walking around. Typically, I kind of um, always flew the nerd flag, even though I didn't know there was a nerd flag flying behind me. Yeah, it was tough. I. I didn't re- see. I didn't know like to the the extent that I was flying the nerd flag. I wanted uh, girls. I, I got math. <sighs> I don't. Yeah. So like when I was a kid, I was super into space stuff. Mm. Yep. Still space. are. Um. Yeah, but I mean, real. But like when I was when I was a kid, like I, so my my passion was anything space. So in uh, like science class. Like I, I would typically like I was like a B plus student, but whenever we would get to the space part where, you know, planets and, and um, <laughs> you know, galaxies and stars and whatnot, it was great. So redemption. 100%. Like yeah. every assignment was 100 percent. I didn't even have to read the assignments because I already knew the material. Right. Uh, I was such a space nerd. I knew the names of every astronaut that was ever an astronaut. <laughs> uh, the, like the, I knew everything. This is how I was with uh, sex ed. Okay. I was exactly the worst student. I knew all the information, had zero practical experience. (laughs) Well, I mean, you could say the same for me because I'd never been to space. I'd never gone to another planet. Right. Not an astronaut. Right. No, Um, that's why I brought up the comparison. I, I wanted nothing more in life than to become an astronaut. Which so why is didn't actually, you? Um, well, so Challenger blew up and uh, kind of <laughs> stunted my... So you wanted nothing more in life to, than to be an astronaut until third grade. At the ripe old age of third grade, yeah. you're like... Uh. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of like... Um, it was like a reality check a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I didn't give up the dream, but it, I, I lost the burning passion when I in my third grade class watched a space shuttle blow up. Um, that was, that was, um, I, 
I told you the story about like, that, right? How I had like, won the, the 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 spelling bee or whatever for the school to allow my class to watch that live. Yep. And then Did I you? didn't even see it actually happen because I was looking at a book on on the bookshelf because we were in the library. So when the actual launch is going off, I was like, oh, I'll look at it in a second. And then everybody's like, what's going on? The lady ran over and cut the TV off right as I looked at the screen. So I, yeah, I, I was responsible for the horrifying memories of my entire classmates in which I did not suffer myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I, I was even half-assing it back then. <laughs> so I tempered my passion, but I, I still, like, the dream still existed. Which is what, um, which is really, honestly, is why I joined the Air Force, uh, because my intended career path was to become a fighter pilot and eventually turn that into an astronaut career. Mm. And I was going to do that through the Air Force. Well, I didn't understand at the time that you had to go to college first to become an officer to become a pilot. Um that was dumb. I was done with school by the yeah. time I was um, thinking, okay, let's go to the, let's go talk to the recruiter. Um, but I wouldn't have been thinking Air Force had I not had that initial astronaut dream. Um, but yeah, so, so space stuff was my initial like nerd, um, my nerd boner, I guess. Right. That translated into sci-fi as well. And not all sci like I didn't really enjoy a lot of sci-fi that wasn't space-based. Right, so I was all into Star Trek and Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica, and but Black not Isaac Asimov. Right, right. <laughs> um, I, I respected Asimov's work, like you know, I Robot and all, you know the did robot. You, did you ever read As anything by Asimov? I, I Robot. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> That's okay. The only thing I read. I read. Uh, I had I had an Asimov collection, but uh, I just read the one. I, I read. Uh, uh, was it Inner Space? They shrink down and go inside the dude's body. Oh, was that Asimov? Yeah. Oh man, that that's that movie of that story is why I fell in love with Meg Ryan. Ah, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. You didn't try to assassinate uh, a president over, her, but you know, she's she's no Jodie Foster, is what I'm saying. Yeah, she's no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would take Meg Ryan. So my 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 celebrity crushes when I was a kid were Meg Ryan. Carrie Fisher and um, uh, Drew Barrymore, like mm. my ladies. Uh, Drew Barrymore was the only one that was anywhere close to my age. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, and then isn't so, she? Yeah. Isn't she exactly our age? She's older than both of us, but she's the I, same. She was born the same yeah, year. I think she's about a year older than us. I think she was born in seventy six. Think so? I think she was born like. Oh. I don't know. This is something that. Man, if only there was an interconnected uh, network of, of databases. But I was already looking up Interspace to make sure that I was right about <laughs> f fucking Asimov writing that shit. Like, may maybe if you would actually look some shit up once in a while. Oh, God damn. I was, I was, I was right and wrong. Okay. She was born earlier in the year than we were, but she was also born two years earlier. Oh, so 75. Five. February 75. The, uh, February 22nd. So just a couple of days ago, she turned 45 years old. Oh, wait. For, no, 44. It would have been 44. It was 75 because we were born in 77. We're turning 43 this year. So, nope, you're right. 45. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, my God. Somebody clipped that shit. <laughs> <laughs> As his Math brain, as his main brain melts down over two digits. <laughs> math is, I don't math well, okay? especially public math. That's the worst oh, kind of that was awesome! I, I, <laughs> like I wasn't even doing the math; it was on the Wikipedia page, and that shit updates automatically. So I was just waiting for you to catch up, and it was just <laughs> that was fun. That was that was good. Um, okay, so space, man. Why are you bringing it up this week, though, man? You love space. Why are you bringing it up this week? What happened this week that's got you all uh, tempered up? No, um, no. So, so this is a we're in the um, the, the nerd week, the nerd phase of our uh, running through our our um, what, what do you, what do you call it? Our tagline? Yes, tagline. Right, the Misery Podcast. So we're on nerds now. Uh, so, what, this, what, so we're just celebrating your nerdiness when it comes to space. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the, so the other thing, the other thing that I had that was like really defines me as a nerd. I was uh, I was a high school band nerd like 
but were you band nerd or band geek? Because you, of your own admission, never learned to read music. What? No, I I know how to read music. I was just not. I didn't put any time and effort into being good at the instrument that I played. I, I well, I just, you just proved my point for me. As soon as I challenged your knowledge of music, you're like, oh, 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 no, 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 what? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Um, no, I can read music. I just was not. Uh, I didn't excel. At, yeah. Uh, performance, so. Um, but you're but you were a great trumpeteer. Okay. Um, yeah. So friends, geeks, veterans, parents, nerds, gamers. Yes. Is the catchphrase for this, uh, or this the the tagline rather for our show, and we're on nerds. So I just thought it'd be fun to talk about like uh, nerd crit. Maybe I don't know what what defines us as nerds. Um, so what would you, what would you say is, is kind of like your, you said that you, you get nerdier as you age. Yes. Um, specifically what, uh, like what areas nerd out? Random facts has always been a strong point of mine. Like I've always, I've, I've always been jealous of Alfie's ability to with like under, like just have a wealth of randomness random knowledge at his, at his, uh, mental fingertips. Um, but for example, like this week I did some research to figure out how to build, to offload my, um, uh, streaming and transcoding to a separate computer. So I have some computer parts I'm putting together. I bought the ones that I needed and I'm going to actually have a separate machine with a network storage location. So when I'm done, processing a video or audio file, I can dump it into a folder and that, that machine will do all the heavy lifting, all the transcoding and, and compiling all that stuff. And then it'll spit back out the file that I need instead of drawing down the computer I currently use. Uh, so I can continue to get more work done instead of sitting there waiting for, you know, 45 minutes for a video to haggle its way out of my system. So you've always been a computer nerd. Oh yeah. Yeah, you were an early adopter. You're still an early adopter for a lot of uh, like gadgets and um, things that come out. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I've also always been a tinker. Like I was the one, I was the guy that's pulling stuff apart. And can- uh, to this day, I don't understand how batteries work. But I've had the same question since I was like five. <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah. You, you took basic. I took Pascal and C, and a few other. Uh, languages. Pascal is my favorite though because it's the easiest one to understand. Um, but this week I also took to uh, <laughs> unupdating the firmware from my Blu-ray disc drive in my computer to okay. backflash it to an older uh, firmware so that I can rip discs faster. Because yeah, that's it, a simple. Right, like anybody can do that. Actually, you can if you just know the terminology to Google. But <gasps> now, instead of being capped at, at at ripping at twelve speed to put my movies on my Plex, I had it up to twenty eight speed last night. Oh, is that right? And that's that's a firmware limitation. Yes, it's a firmware limitation. Limit it. The drive, if it's not limited, will sit there and run until it starts running into errors. You know, check some errors or whatever. And if that then it'll just th- throttle down, reread the sections where it suspects the errors happen, and then it'll just lock at that speed. The firmware will lock it at a lower speed in order to have more consistent, um, consistent read speeds throughout the entire drive. And you you unlock that little portion of it, and not only can you rip more things with your DVD or your Blu-ray player, but you can also uh, do it faster. So that's what I did this week, and that's just kind of always been how I operate. Like I'm always looking to tweak just take take the audio on this on, on this podcast i'm always looking to tweak shit and make it better for right. as little effort slash cost as possible well for as little cost on me and effort on others as possible i put a lot of effort into my fucking tweaks i think you're pretty fucking nerdy dude <laughs> probably <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, man if, if people want to to just find out exactly how nerdy you fucking are where where might they go on the internet to that out uh you can email me at i'm a big fat fucking nerd at gmail.com no i'm kidding that'd be, <laughs> that'd be a great email address though oh somebody somebody get that um i'm a big fat fucking nerd at gmail.com 
Um, uh, no, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, and somewhere if you really want to hit me on the socials uh, and share funny clips with me, find me on TikTok. I don't even know what my username is on there. It's something Ethan Kane ish though. So it's like Amos. It's Amos. yeah. It's it's Amos Kane Ethan seventy seven or something. I don't fucking know. It's something along those lines. Uh, but if you're on TikTok, then shoot me a Twitter DM with your TikTok name and I'll reverse look you up. Like, I don't know. Whatever. Dude. Uh, where can we... Technology's hard, man. <laughs> uh, but uh, RM underscore Del Noche is where I'm at on Twitter. Uh, Del Noche or Del Noche 77, pretty much wherever else. Not TikTok, though. Because he, because he doesn't want to laugh. He, he, he's got too much laugh in his life. Don't send him anything funny. <laughs> you can find the show at Ritual Misery, uh, R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y on Twitter, and you can find all the links and everything else we do at our website, ritualmisery.com. We would love it if you joined us in Discord, uh, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. I've actually, I've actually been company. in there pretty regularly lately. Yeah, it's a good time in there, right? I mean, when you join it and then don't do anything with it for two years and then you suddenly jump in, people don't want to talk to you. and. Uh, it's a little elitist. It's okay. I'll work my way back into the social memes. Uh, <laughs> we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific at diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, thank you for listening for Kent, for you, for me, and for everyone in space. This has been your nerd ridden Ritual Misery Podcast. See you in South... Well, see you next week. See you next week! See ya! Let's see if it works! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y